Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 3 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In the previous video, we were discussing state functions and state variables and I introduced the idea of internal energy to you. I told you that any system, whatever kind of energy it has, whether it's chemical or it's mechanical or it is electrical, whatever kind of energy a system has, that a sum total of that energy is known as the internal energy. And when we are studying the state of a system or when we are studying thermodynamics, we are interested in knowing the energy changes that take place in the system. While we are focusing on the system, do we also study the energy changes that take place outside the system that is in the surroundings? In thermodynamics, our focus is the system. We are not really concerned about what goes on in the surroundings. We are mainly interested about the system. Is energy coming in or is energy going out of the system? And what is what happens to the surroundings? We don't really care. For example, I'm carrying out a reaction in a beaker here, right here, uh, and uh, while I'm carrying out this reaction in a beaker right here, uh, the beaker is my system and the surroundings are actually the entire universe other than the beaker. So while I'm carrying out this uh, reaction, what is the effect? How is it affecting Jupiter? It really doesn't affect Jupiter if you look at it and if you look at the universe as the surrounding it definitely is affecting the surrounding and therefore since Jupiter is also in the surroundings it is affecting Jupiter but that is not really our area of interest we are mainly interested in the beaker what is happening to the contents of the beaker is it losing energy is it gaining energy what kind of energy is it how is its internal energy changing so now that we know what internal energy is, I also told you in the previous video that internal energy is represented by the capital letter U and delta U means a change in the internal energy and that's what we are studying in thermodynamics. So how can a change in internal energy be brought about? There are three ways how it can be done. One is when you do work on a system or the system does work. The second way is that heat is exchanged by the system and it, with the surroundings it either gives out heat or it absorbs heat from the surroundings and the third is an exchange of matter. We will now take these one by one and see how internal energy is affected. If we are observing or we are causing a change in internal energy only by using work, I said if work is done by the system or on the system, if we try to study change in internal energy only using work. There are two ways how this can be done. But before I come to two ways how this can be done, our intention is to carry out the process in such a way that only work is causing the change in internal energy and not the exchange of heat or matter. So how should we carry out the reaction? We should carry out the reaction in a flask and this flask should be insulated, right? Like a thermos flask. It should be insulated, the walls should not allow heat to pass through it and the, the entire container, it should be sealed. Why? Because we do not want, want matter to exchange either. Because we only want to study the changes that occur in the internal energy when work is involved. So what do we do? We take a container or uh, the container in which the reaction takes place or our system, it should take place in a container which has got insulated walls and which is sealed. Such walls which do not let heat to pass through them are known as adiabatic walls. So we should use a container that has adiabatic walls and such a process where heat exchange does not take place is known as an adiabatic process. And in an adiabatic process, the, in the energy that is heat is not exchanged, so a heat exchange is equal to zero. If the amount of heat given or taken in was Q, then Q would be zero, that is there is no exchange of heat with the surroundings. But you can bring about a change in the internal energy by just work and not heat. So by using adiabatic walls, we have eliminated the factor of heat 
or exchange of matter and now we can carry out the work. So how can we do work on the system or have the system do work? There are two ways how we can do work on the system and cause a change in the internal energy. The first thing we should, we should have in mind to carry out this thing is that let us assume that the initial state is A and the final state is B. The initial state, at the initial state, the temperature is Ta and the internal energy, if you, the sum total of all energies is Ua. So, in the initial state A, the temperature is Ta and the internal energy is Ua. And the final state after the, after the work has been done, we will achieve the final state B and the temperature at final state B will be Tb and Ub would be the internal energy. So assuming these to be the values, we, how do, is the work done in the two ways? The first way how we can carry out work in this reaction mixture would be that we put a pedal inside the beaker or inside the jar and this pedal is operated from the outside we are causing the pedal to rotate and as you know uh, uh, do you use that little handmade churners that we use sometimes to make um, to make certain drinks even lemonade so these churners the hand churners something like that you know you, you are using a churner which is inside the jar and as you rotate the pedals of that churner what happens it causes mechanical work it causes the liquid inside the jar to move or rotate and as the liquid inside the jar rotates the molecules due to this kinetic energy they are they they start moving faster and faster because work is being done as a result of that the kinetic energy of the molecules inside the jar it starts rising it starts increasing and when kinetic energy increases, what happens? The temperature rises. So we find that initially, when we had not agitated the liquid, the temperature was Ta and the internal energy was Ua. But when we agitated it, the temperature, it rose to Tb and the internal energy increased and it came up to Ub. So we say that Tb obviously is greater than Ta when work is being done on the system. That is, we are carrying out work on the system. We are causing the churning inside the uh, system. So what would the change in temperature be? The change in temperature would be equal to Tb minus Ta. What is the difference in temperature that occurred? It would be Tb, final temperature, minus initial temperature. And what would be the change in internal energy? It again would be the final internal energy minus the initial internal energy or internal energy of initial state. Now, after this, there is a second way how this work can be carried out. It's not necessary that the work that has to be carried out has to be mechanical. You remember when I said that there is a state function, the for a state function that is for internal energy to reach from Ua to Ub, you can use any method. Now we are using work in this case. We could have used heat also. But in this case we are using work and we are using work which kind of work? Mechanical work. Now the work could have been electrical too. You could have used an electrical work. How? When you have um, an immersion rod in, you know, geysers have got these rods that, uh, that heat up and they heat up the water inside it these immersion rods they can be just inserted into the jar and if you turn the electric current on the immersion rod gets hot and it starts giving it the electrical energy gets converted into heat energy and it raises the temperature of the system let us say in this case we had caused uh, the work amount of work or the measured value of the work was equal to one kilojoules we can carry out the same amount of work using electrical energy. Let us pass uh, energy so much that one kilojoule of work is done on the same system. What do we find? We find again that the initial state was A. By passing one joule of electrical energy also, the final state was UB only. We got the same state, final state B, and the temperature rose by the same amount, that is TB, and the internal energy rose by the same amount UB. That is, delta T and delta U were the same when we carried out the same amount of work using electrical energy instead of mechanical energy. So what does 
Electrical energy of 1 kJ was used in the form of immersion rods and we find that delta, e, delta T and delta U will be the same as TA, TB, UA and UB are the same. So from this we understand this is a proof that U that is internal energy U is a state function because what is a state function? A state function is a property which is used to describe a system and how that state is achieved does not depend on the path of the change. Whatever two states are the same property at two different states the whatever the change has occurred could occur directly it could occur through steps or it could occur through different paths that is as we have seen here using mechanical energy using electrical energy and then we'll see how the same change is caused using uh, heat energy so therefore we say u is a state function it is a state function as and who was the scientist who proved this J.P. Joule in 1840 to 50, he carried out experiments which proved this thing. Now, this work that is caused where we are using adiabatic walls is known as adiabatic work. Why? Because we want to specify when we are using adiabatic walls, the change in internal energy is being caused only by work and not by exchange of heat or exchange of uh, matter. So we say this is adiabatic work. So W if work adiabatic we had to measure that the work adiabatic would be equal to the change in internal energy and this change in internal energy is equal to the, the internal energy in the final state minus internal energy of the initial state. Now imagine we were doing work on the system therefore UB was greater than UA. Since it was greater than UA, when you found out UB minus UA, you will get a positive value. So whenever you get a positive value, it means that work has been done on the system. But if the system was doing work instead, something was happening inside the jar which was causing the pedal which is outside to move, then the internal energy UB minus UA that is final state the temperature of the final state would have been lower than the temperature of the initial state because when a system does work it loses energy so the kinetic energy goes down the temperature comes down therefore TB would be uh, lower than TA in that case W adiabatic work adiabatic the value for it you would get negative which means that the system is doing work so whenever you get the value of delta U as positive, it means that the system is being worked upon and whenever the value of delta U or work adiabatic is negative, it means the system is doing that work. So this was about how uh, internal energy is a state function and how we use only work to bring about the change. Now the second way how internal energy can be changed is by using heat. So let us take the second one. Now we want heat to cause a change or bring the temperature from TB, TA to TB. We are bring, keeping the two states constant. The initial state is still A and the final state is still B. And the temperature TA now we do not use adiabatic walls. Why? Because we cannot pass heat through adiabatic walls. We need walls that can conduct heat. So we use a copper container or a borosyl glass a beaker, something which allows heat to pass through. So the temperature initially was TA and we bring it up to TB. How? By providing heat to the, uh, to the beaker or to the, uh, to the system which has thermally conducting walls. If you want exchange of heat, you do not need insulated walls you need thermally conducting walls so when it passes through thermally conducting walls again ta and tb are the initial temperature and final temperature and this difference delta t is also represented by q an exchange of heat how much of heat change or temperature change occurred how, how would you calculate the value of q it would be equal to tb minus ta is q or it is delta t i should have written delta t here delta t is q there's no need of writing twice 
which is equal to and which is also equal to the change in internal energy because this time we have brought the change in internal energy by changing the temperature by providing heat you remember when i told you about state functions that many different properties are fixed for a certain state so for temperature tb the value of u would be ub and for temperature ta the value of u would be ua so when temperature is changed from t1 to tb ua automatically changes from ua to ub so delta u is again the same just as we talked in the case of adiabatic work in the case of heat also when heat is being provided to the system when heat is being when the beaker is being heated up at that time the energy kinetic energy of molecules is increasing so tb is greater than ta so whenever the value of uh, delta u or q or delta t would be positive so when the value is positive it means heat is being absorbed by the system and when the value of delta t or delta u in the or q in the case of heat exchange is negative it means that heat is being given out by the system or the system is being cooled by radiating heat to the surroundings right so this was how we use uh, how we can bring about the changes in delta u by using work and heat in the next video i'll tell you how the it actually happens in normal life we do not use either adiabatic walls or just thermally conducting walls and ex and just seal it so that uh, no work is done in real life you may have uh, a case where you're using both work and heat and then the exchange is taking place so under those conditions we have to think of both the processes how both the effects that is the work and heat are causing a change in internal energy we'll do that in the next video please come back for it if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching bye bye for now